Hi everyone. I am sorry, I am a few minutes late today. I've been really busy today, very productive. I can't wait to show you everything that I've been up to. I promised that I would have a couple of boxes to show you as well as a preview of some of the classes that um, I'm offering as um, hosted events this fall. Um, today is the next to last day of September, which means that tomorrow is the last day for the Designer Series Paper sale. That is um, Designer Series Paper 10 different designs from the annual catalog are on sale by three get one free. So it's a great time to stock up on your Designer Series Paper. And you might recall that one of my favorites is the woven threads that we used in my um, birthday class this month. Looks like this. It's beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous paper. And um, the Dino Roar, the dinosaur paper. Um, I'm just looking to see. I don't know where those cards are. Um, just did some super cute. There's one. Super cute dinosaur cards. This is one. And it opens up like this. How cute. Hey, Linda. Good to have you here. So um, I believe this paper is also included in that sale. So that's pretty awesome. So if you... Um, I don't know why that just went. Um, if you... If you need to order that paper, don't forget um, my website is open 24-7 and I'll post a link in the current host code in the comments at the end of the video. So I wanted to show you something, you know, we've, I've done quite a bit with the pigment sprinkles recently and I ran across something this weekend using the ink refills. I haven't done that in a while, so I decided I would use that today. So here are a couple of the things that I did today with ink refills and just the shimmery white cardstock. So how cool are these? So we're going to put those together and I'm going to show you how I created that background as well. So I'm going to set those up there. Oops, this needs to go up there too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down so that I can show you some of these other things that I have going on and get the camera off my face at the same time. So let's see if I've got this right. Um, and I'm going to wait just a second to see if it shifts with me. And hopefully it does. Otherwise, you guys are just looking at me, looking to my right like I'm crazy. And I guess that's not a foregone conclusion that I'm not. And I just realized my stamp set has disappeared on me that I'm going to use today. But anyway, um, this is what I just finished. These cute, cute, cute little snowmen class. So one of the awesome things about being a demonstrator on my team is the access to some of this awesome training. And this was, this class was featured in a training from last weekend that um, I participated in and they're so so cute. This was my first time <coughs> excuse me to play with the snowmen and um, I used the little puff what's it called? Um, Snowfall Accents Puff Paint and you paint this on and then you activate it with the heat gun and it just puffs up and it's super super cute and then this embossing folder too is part of that suite. So Cute, cute paper. I am working on um, a class using this paper and the embellishment kit that comes with it. So here's the embellishment kit. And it's got some really cool glittery washi tape and some snowballs. And then some felt accents in red and um, Florida Flamingo and I'm going to say Garden Green and Coastal Cabana, Cabana. and then um, some little enamel shapes. So we've got arms and noses and eyes and buttons. So too, too cute. I would love to um, love for you to attend. I've been stocking up on these embellishment kits because I think that's going to be a pretty popular class. And, um, and it may be an extended class so that we can... Um, 
I don't know, do even more. So uh, let me know if you're interested in that snowman class, and I'll make sure that you know when it becomes um, ready to sign up. So the... Um, let me get this out of the way too. So one of the other classes that I'm going to offer. So this is what I'm doing is you gather your friends together and I'll bring all my stuff. I'll do all the hard work. We'll get together and have some fun. And then everybody leaves with some projects to take home, products to take home, some creations that they've made. And one of the classes is a tag class. Now you've got to imagine that this pizza box is gold. My gold pizza boxes are not here yet, um, but I went ahead and made everything else. So this class is going to include the pizza box to hold all the tags, and then we're going to make 12 tags in the class. So how awesomely cute are these? So we're featuring, um, I'm just going to call it the plaid suite lots of gold accents. So we'll be using some of the designer series paper, the holiday rhinestones, and um, some gold accents. So 12 tags, right? And a little box to hold them in. That could be a gift. That could be your tags for the season. And we've got a couple of ways that we can do that. But just to make the tags and have the box would be um, a $15 cost to each participant in the class or free with an order. So they could make these tags and then purchase the supplies that they need to make more and then their, their tags would be free. So that is one class. And now I've cleaned up enough of my area. There are a couple of other classes. We could do the traditional Christmas card class where they would make six cards or, um, or I've got a Thanksgiving, well, not a Thanksgiving class, but a thankful class that is um, going to feature oh, dead gum, some gift bags and cards. And I apologize, I thought I had all of this out of the way, but I can't get to my stamp set or there, my shimmery white cardstock. That's what I needed. Um, let's do this box first. Sorry. So here is one of the completed boxes. This uses two six by six pieces of designer series paper. It's super fast and easy to make the little tag. You need a, a two and a quarter inch circle. Then this is the gold glimmer is punched from the starburst, and then that's a two inch whisper white circle. And these both, these two sizes, are the same two inch, uh, two six by six pieces of designer series paper, just folded and scored um, with slightly different measurements. So let me see if I can find, I've used so much of this paper, but let's see if I can find two of the same pattern two full sheets of the same pattern. All right, so there's that one. Okay. Looks like I've got two of those. Nope, 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 two of those. Okay, I like this red. So this is unbelievably easy and I have a partial one over here to kind of show you how it goes together. So we're going to start with two pieces, right? And then we're going to score the top at three quarters. Now this flap is going to fold over so you need to be aware of your directions, okay? These um, pine cones don't seem to really have a direction but the deer most definitely did. So I was sure that I scored from the bottom so that when I fold it over, my deer would be right side up. Right, so, but now my prints do sort of have a, so we'll score both of these and we'll do this to both pieces. 
and score it a quarter, three quarters, and then three quarters. And then I'm going to actually make the, the squattier box here. So this one is scored at three quarters, and then all the other sides are at an inch and a half. It's all dependent on what you want to put in it. So the first time I did it, I was putting in um, some black dimensionals. Now how cool is that? So we now have dimensionals that are black. So when you're working with dark cardstock, that white, stark white dimensional is not going to show through. And you may not be able to see my scoring. Oh, and the new trimmer is going to be available. I think maybe even this week demonstrators can order it. I'm not entirely positive of that, but I think so. I believe it's October 1st. Okay, so now I've got my score lines, and you can kind of see them. So this would score down. And then here, here, and here. So that's one. I learned this bag this time from Celine Kempton. Where did my scissors go? See, this is why you should never clean up. You lose things. Where are my scissors? Okay, so then you're just going to cut up to from the bottom going to cut up to your score lines on the right and left score line. Right. And then you only need adhesive in four places. Just the outside at the top and then the tops here. And um, Tombow is an amazing glue for bags, Tombow being the liquid glue. Um, it takes just a minute to set, just a few seconds. Tear and tape is also fine for this. Um, I probably would not use snail on these just because um, snail is not as sturdy as adhesive. Yesterday, I put together 25 of the little coffins. Um, have you seen the coffins from the holiday catalog? I don't know that you're supposed to call a coffin cute, but okay, I'm going to set that there. I'll hold that down. Um, I'm going to let the Tombow get a little tacky, and that way it will grab faster when I put it into place. The coffins are are here, part of the Monster Bash suite, which is so, so cool. So here are the coffin treat boxes down here. You get 12 boxes for $7, and here's one decorated up here with one of the ghouls from the designer series paper, um, and they're so much fun. I'm making a wreath from them. So I embossed the tops of the coffins, and then I distressed them with the copper and silver um, ink, the new ink that's in the um, holiday catalog. And I honestly don't know how to pronounce what they are named. Um, okay, so now I've just, I've just taken those ends and folded them in and made my little, little bottom. Okay. I'm going to do that over here as well. Okay. Now, what Celine said, and I thought, well, that's really odd. She says that now you've got these two, they're exactly the same. Well, clearly one has to go inside the other. And it's just kind of magic. One side will line up and fit better in the other. I mean, this one looks amazing to me, but let's try the other side as well. 
And it's not bad either, but you can see it's a little off here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this side in this one. All right. So I'm going to put a little more of the liquid glue. Yeah. So one of the things I thought that this little bag would be good for would be um, homemade soup. Um, soup. Soap. My goodness. Um, not soup, but soap. I think this would be a great size for, for that. And I want to make sure that the top corners here seal really well. So I'm going to grab a glue dot and stick those there. Once you've got your bag or your box, whatever you want to call it, I call it a bag, I guess, because it doesn't close completely. But And you could even pinch this together if you want it to be more of a bag. And you could give it little handles. And then I stamp on a piece of scrap paper my little tree. Let me grab So I have all of my holiday stamps behind me, um, which you can't see because I just totally did that off camera. And I want. I'm going to grab the plaid one this time. So this is the perfectly plaid stamp set. And I put my tree away, it looks like. Let me grab it and the spruce ink. I love this stamp set and I love punches. Punches are key when you're making gift items or things that you're going to sell at a craft fair because they go so fast. And um, I don't know, someone you know has a little tendonitis trouble with her elbow. And so the fewer big shot moves, the better. Harden gets a little expensive after a while if I'm paying him to do that big shot work. Marshall was cheaper. All right, so now I'm just going to layer these up. And honestly, I just did all three. I did the gold to this, just flat. Um, the Tombow is not going to stick to this immediately, but it will set. It will dry and set. And then I just need little dimensionals. Which I love the little mini dimensionals. Not having to cut them up. Hey, Joyce. I'm so glad you guys are here today. I have been working on my goals for the next year. I hope you all are too. If you're a demonstrator, the new Stampin' Up! year is pretty important to you. Because this is when we start earning points for the following year, which means the um, incentive trip we start over. And working on my goals, I actually have a shot at earning the incentive trip this time. I'm really excited about. So that takes the support of my family and my customers and my team. But I'm participating in some training and have some homework. That little burger just doesn't want to stick. Julie, did I forget to undo one side? I guess I'm more stick friendly then. Now, how cute is that? And then 
um, there's some little bells that are part of this suite as well. And then linen thread to finish off with a cute, sweet little bow. So, and actually this is the same paper. You can really see the difference, but you can see what the difference in, this is an inch here, whereas this is an inch and a half. So depending on how tall and how wide your gift is, you can make your box any, any size you need to. So this is just working with six by six paper, but remember if you're working with the 12 by 12 designer series paper, you can do this with lots of different sizes. So that is a super fun and easy box to do. And then decorating the pizza boxes are always really fun as well. And then there are pillow boxes in the catalog. So I can't pick all this up at once. So anyway, let me get that out of the way. I'll just come up to here and show you what is on this. So this pizza box has a three by three square of shaded spruce paper. And then the designer series paper is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then a two inch gold glimmer. I punched the tree out with the um, tree punch that is part of the same suite. Then this ribbon is in the holiday catalog as well. I'll post um, the products that I've used afterwards. And then the holiday rhinestones are um, all these beautiful colors as well, kind of some jewel tones. So those were the ornaments on my tree. And then with the gold pizza boxes, which are all shiny and bright, um, really really festive here as well and super fast so I'm all about the fast when especially making things like that so and this is actually a, a belly band will slide onto a pizza box but also it's just designer series paper wrapped around I made a sweet little tag a piece of ribbon just really easy and fast to do so, if you've got some little gifts, the pizza boxes would even hold three by three cards in them. All right, the trees are running amok in there. So, this is the stamp set and the punch. So, this is the bundle. When you purchase the two of them together, you save 10%. Then you can add on the designer series paper called Wrapped in Plaid, and then the ribbon here's the ribbon and I'm looking for shaded spruce and gold ribbon right, so it goes with that sweet love how all this coordinates together makes it super easy alright now I'm going to move this all of this out of my way. I think that I'm safe to do that now. Put this back behind me. So when I was putting that behind me, I reached in and found one of the other classes that I can offer this fall. So this is um, actually from a paper pumpkin kit and is the sayings are grateful for family like you and thankful for friends like you make these beautiful tags as well as some cards to coordinate and the cards come with really pretty envelopes that coordinate with them as well so your guests can make two each, so two gift bags and two cards for $12 or free with an order. And that would be a super fun class. And wouldn't that be beautiful? My friend Rosemary was just saying how pretty this would be as part of like the Thanksgiving place setting. Um, so that's a class. All right, now, get that out of the way too. What I wanted to really show you today was how we did this background and this background 
and what we do with it after we've done it. Okay, so I am starting with actually I cut this. This is half or quarter piece of an eight and a half by eleven um, cardstock, and I did that so that I'd be able to trim it down just a little bit to make a layer. And I am going to bring in a blast from the past here. My really friendly old friend right? and I've got two re-inkers so this is a re-inker I've got granny apple green and pretty peacock and you know what I don't even need this yet I need to stamp first so I'm going to stamp in Versamark ink and I'm using stamps from the Christmas gleaming stamp set these are clean stamps. So I'm grabbing the ornaments. And I discovered earlier when I was making the first one that it was really hard to see where I had stamped when I was doing this. And so you're going to understand that in just a second. So I've got my, my embossing powder my white embossing powder is close by and I'm going to very carefully do this. Um, so, Versamark is clear and sticky and it takes a long time to dry. So that is why it is so awesome for stamping projects like this. But now I can barely see. There's no way I could come in with another stamp set and try and figure out where it should be placed. So I'm going to carefully each time I stamp to come over and go ahead and put on the embossing powder which okay so you can kind of see this gives me a much better idea where that next ornament needs to be. And these ornaments are so so pretty. Um, they're pretty colored, they are pretty just stamped on, on a foil. I really need to make this. So this takes a minute, you know, for me to, to stamp and then, um, Add the embossing powder each time but and I'm not I'm not really trying to do a pattern it's hard not to do a pattern have you all ever discovered that and then the other problem is actually I better not do that just yet up here. Yeah, it's really hard not to do a pattern. And I think that I could probably, I could probably see to stamp the next one. Although those are, let's see. All right. see, I'm all about not doing a pattern and then look at me. See what that looks like. So really this is just emboss resist which you've seen done lots of different ways. Although I have not done this and you're going to be amazed that I'm able to use as much water as I do on this shimmer white cardstock. No, I can't see the end of that. So back over here we go. Okay. 
part, the other part that gets tricky is to not touch where I already have embossing powder. Because that would, <laughs> that would ruin what I'm going for. This is kind of like those, um, what does it? Y'all ever take car trips where you had markers that were clear? And then when you hit the right answer, I don't know, it seems like on road trips, it was one of the things that my mom had to keep us busy and not fighting. Something that looked clear and then it revealed itself. Okay, so I think I've got this all pretty well covered. And forgive me while I jump behind me and emboss this. I'm going to clamp it like this to save my fingers. And while I'm doing that, I'll set this up here so that you can look at it because this could also be a class. A little more expensive, be $40. Um, Okay, this is taking a long time to melt because there's so much on it. As I had this, as I was doing that, I had this terrible thought that maybe this wasn't really shimmer white. Oh my gosh, it's not. Ah! Okay, this will not work this way. So, I didn't look closely enough. And I'm probably going to get in a big hurry and make a big mess. I don't know if you can see the difference between the shimmer white, but this has all the shimmer to it. If I were to add water to this, it would just um, all just pill up. This one will hold a ton of water, and I am so, so sorry to have to do this. Um, but I'm going to do it again, because otherwise you can't see what this, you can't see the magic if I don't. Oh, I'm so mad at myself for not looking at that better. I just knew I had grabbed the right paper. I think the Countdown Project is gorgeous, too. And I love the ideas of either adding a Halloween component to it. I've seen that done, and it's so, so cute to put Halloween treats on the other side. Or to do a, a thankful... Um, either have everyone um, draw out, everyone in the family draw from a box each day 
some reason to be uh, some reason to be thankful for that particular day. Candy Woodall, I think I saw you jump on, and I just want to tell you I'm sending you big hugs today, girl. I know that this is not an easy day, and I didn't get a chance. <laughs> no, Linda, you know I goof. You've been in my classes often enough to see. Um, and you've also seen me play with water and color and seen the messes that can erupt from that, too. Oh, my gosh. Maybe I should give you guys an intermission so that you could... You know, go get yourself a drink. Oh, gosh, dog. Go get yourself a drink. Or check the football scores. But that one was close. Something of that. And by all means, you now know how long it's going to take me to do this because you've watched me do it already once. And I am cheating and doing much the same design that I did on the first one. And I will tell you, this takes a long time to dry, even when you're using a heat gun. So I'm not, we're not going to stay on the video the whole time that this takes to dry. I'm not that cruel. Nor do I think you guys would stay for that. And I think I meant that to be the other pattern, but maybe not. Right. So while after I get this one wet and colored, we'll work with the ones that are dry to show you a finished project. All right, here I go again. What shall I leave you to look at this time? Hmm. I don't know. I'll put these back so you can imagine what we're going to have. Okay, I'm just looking to see. Oh, it looks like that. Just
the struggle is real to see if you're white on white really all melted. Right, I think it did. Now for the fun. So I can clean those once this dries. I, now don't give up on this. I'll paint this one that's on Whisper White. I'll um, color it with the blends, maybe. But this today is all about the reinker. Let me cover up my embossing powder. That would be a mess. And here are my reinkers. And then this is just, I'm just going to get this wet. Um, and this is handy. And you can see I am just really saturating this paper. And I, you probably can't see, but can you see already the little bit of the resist going on? Oh, I need a paper towel on hand. Okay, and I need, okay, and that. I'm just going to put that up and spritz again. Okay, now I'm going to start dropping Isn't that the coolest thing? So pretty. Okay, so that is Granny Apple Green, and I'm, I don't know, I could use the Aqua Painter to move this around a little bit, but it's so you <laughs> I am wearing white. <laughs> well, I don't think this was as big a risk as the um as the pigment sprinkles are. All right, now I'm adding pretty peacock. And I've got so much Granny Apple Green that it looks a lot darker than normal. And I'm going to spray again. And I may have gotten too much color on here. The thing is, you can mop all this up and try again. So, how cool. I mean, even that is just really cool. But I've got so much concentration of the pretty peacock. that I may want it to move around a bit. Is it? It looks so much darker than the other. Of course, that could be the difference partly in the wet and the dry.
I feel like I have so much dark right in here. But just like with the, the pigment sprinkles, I really want to leave it alone and let the magic happen on its own. And you know, to clean, clean your aqua painters, you know, you just keep wiping it on the paper towel until it is clear. So my paper towel is really, really saturated. So one of the other things that you could do, and since I've got a piece of this um, right here with me, mm -hmm. I'll show you. In, instead of embossed resist, you can make the background and then emboss on top once it's dry and I have an example a little bit of that but let me grab so this is I promise I'm looking at it it's shimmer white as well and I'm just gonna get it all wet I was really surprised to do this on shimmer white I've done this on glossy paper which we don't carry any longer but I've never done it on a shimmer white. Right, that's pretty fun. And you can see how it runs. And then I'll just add, I'm going to add a little more water. And if you spray this after it's dry or drip alcohol in it, that does some really cool stuff too. Linda and I have played with that a little bit. just added that peacock just isn't it's ending up so concentrated where it drops and not spreading as much but you can pick this up and let it run around it's really pretty on watercolor paper I was just pretty excited to see that I could do it on the shimmer paper as well just different results every time I don't know with that strong peacock in the middle with so many squares of so many dots of that how this would turn out. I don't want it to be muddy. So and yep, I'm a little inky. I think that's okay. I will set these aside and let them dry on their own. And let's go ahead and build the card, the cards with what we have. Okay. So this card is one where I created the background by painting with an aqua painter and some reinker. This is um, crumb cake and um, gray granite, balmy blue, and seaside spray, I think, are the colors that I used here. And I just created that soft background, and then once it dried, I embossed Just Breathe in copper um, embossing powder. So that's a time that you could create um, what am I trying to say? You could do your background first and then 
do the embossing. Not really emboss resist, but embossing nonetheless. Okay, so here is my little seahorse sea design. And I have, I used um, Balmy Blue and Bermuda Bay re-inkers on this. So I've got a card base of um, Bermuda Bay and a layer of Balmy Blue. And I think that this layer is just shy of five and a half, so it's only an eighth of an inch then. Yes, a sponge would help too. Um, so I'm going to come into five and a quarter by four on this. So remember, I said I made it a full five and a half by four and a quarter so that if I had some bleeding on the edges, I'd be able to trim those off. So I'm just going to take an eighth of an inch all the way around. And get this down to five and a quarter by four. Okay, now it's still a little bumpy from being wet. Notice you ever find little pieces of bling in unexpected places? That's what happened there. I picked up a little gold metallic pearl from somewhere on my desk. So, upcoming events while I'm doing this. October 5th is National Card Making Day. And I have a class, a workshop with Hope Hardy. And we are offering a one sheet wonder. And what that means is we're going to give everyone a piece, a 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper and a diagram, a pattern um, to cut that out and make a bunch of different cards. It gets hard sometimes to cut your designer series paper. We know this. And that's what this class is all about, it is showing you to go ahead and cut it. And you can use the same pattern and make lots of more cards. Just use your own greeting and keep going. All right, so that's how that's going to go on there. And I'll go ahead and use Tombow. Yep, the back is really ugly, but that's okay. I love how the sparkle shows through when you do this. And I've used a little bit more than normal because I want this to, to come down and lie flat. I've just got the tiniest of mats showing. And then somewhere I had already stamped, here's to you. And then layer for the inside. Let's see if I can find it, figure out where that went off. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here's the here's to you. And, oh, that's is not where it's supposed to be. I should have my silver metallic thread right here to my right so I could grab it up and make a little mess. But clearly it hasn't been put back in the right place since the retreat. So I'm spinning around madly off camera trying to figure out where it might be um, to see if I can grab it quickly and recover or if I have to go on. So sit tight.
Sadly. No. So, mm, that's a bummer. I wonder where it is. I really thought I had put everything away from the retreat. The retreats are so much fun, but I have to admit, there's an element of this that happens when we get home. When you try to remember where everything goes. Okay, so grab some of these silver pearls. Okay. Now, if I had the stamp set nearby, I might stamp something on the inside as well. I will stamp something on the inside. Here's to you. Could be a birthday card. It could be a lot of things, but pretty cute, huh? All right. So then here is the ornament version of this. And what happened to see? It's really not safe. It's not there. Okay. So I want to see how this looks with some silver behind it. I think that's too much. Well, we'll go with what we have. The next one can be perfect. All right, so I don't see any obvious parts that I want to cut off. Here. Um, once you do this, though, I will tell you the embossed resist. You'll get some ink that does kind of want to stick or act like it's looking to stick to your white embossed area. And you, you take um, a paper towel or a tissue to wipe that off. So let me get this trimmed and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to cut that. Okay, so let me slide my quarter by four now. Okay, so you just want to come back and rub over. Sorry, that's shaking the whole table. But that will kind of get any bits that did stick, and it'll kind of shine up your embossed. Like this one. Okay. So, um, Granny Green and Pretty Peacock were the two here. And again, I've got an inner layer. Yeah. So, let's do the peacock to the Granny Apple Green. So if you are a demonstrator and watching, remember that, yep, this is, September is a pin, uh, is the end of the quarter, so make sure that you have your minimum met so that you can keep your discount going forward. Next month will be a pending month, which is kind of a catch-up month. 
but you'll want to hang on for all the new goodies that are coming. There's the new trimmer coming. The purple posy ink is now here and available. Before we know it, the celebration catalog will be out. We'll be able to pre-order from the occasions catalog. I'm trying to figure out how to post the directions for my card classes on my team's page. So that's another perk of being part of the Stamping Queens. I will post um, in the comments here the products that I've used so that you can order them for yourselves. And here is a piece of Whisper White. And did you see? Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, see, I really think it needs a little something behind it. Okay, we'll go with this. And I'm just going to grab some glue dots. Snail does not stick to glimmer paper. Blue dots will. And I'd like to put a messy nest of silver thread behind it, but it's hiding. Not a possibility. The paper with this suite is also gorgeous, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's a really fun technique, Joyce. I think you should try it. I can't wait to see what you make. You know, I'm kind of funny about where I put my greetings. Okay, so Merry Christmas. And then... What shall we put on the side, in the inside? Hmm, I love, I love this border. I'd kind of like to use this without the and. Now I love the holly here. Oh, what to see, what to say, I don't know can't decide. Maybe we should add some of the holiday rhinestones. I'm cleaning these because I'm thinking I need a block if I'm going to stamp on the inside. Y'all want to vote? What should go on the inside? Be jolly. Deck the halls. Should we put deck the halls and some holly? Deck the holes here. Put this behind it. Oh, struggle. Real. So I am going to stamp deck the holes I'm not sure if I got that straight and then you think the ornament's in the blue okay I think you're kind of right, actually. And I don't know that I even want to put deck the halls since I didn't use holly. It's 
Hmm. I think the squatty one. Okay. Going for it. Oh, you know what? Might. Okay. I'm going to very quickly do too much, I have a feeling. But. I like the idea of that. Maybe in the granny apple green. I don't know. I feel like you can go here and then here and do a little corner. All right. In for a penny, in for a pound. I don't know. What do y'all think? Oh my gosh. I've talked way too long. I will make projects of the ones that are drying over there and post them later. And I will post some uh, list of the products that we used in our samples today. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, I am looking actively for hosts for classes this month, October, November, and December, and there are prizes for hosting, as well as just the fun that you get to have with your friends when you do that. Um, so we made these two today. Well, I've scattered everything hither, hither, and yon. Um, I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. And um, if you have any other ideas of what we should do, then please let me know. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.